Okay, oh. so uh, the board is just finishing its uh, work session for uh, tonight, uh, Tuesday, December 14th, 2021. The work session was via Zoom. Uh, the village board meeting is also via Zoom and it follows having been uh, rescheduled from uh, the normal date of December 13th. Um, so we uh, appreciate everyone's uh, understanding with rescheduling the meeting for tonight. Um, Mayor? Yes, I'm gonna flip flop my agenda because tonight is the fire board elections and it's seven o'clock and there's only two hours left to vote and urge all villagers to vote. Everyone votes at Village Hall. Um, the fire district has a $19 million budget, a budget bigger than ours and bigger than Tuckahoe's. So um, it's important we elect really good people and it's important you make your choice. So um, urge anybody that's listening because your vote really does count in these off months, off year elections. Um, Biggest news is, and I'm kind of going to read it because it's important to Iona officially closed on the acquisition. And if you can believe it, 28 acres in our village, which is the largest landowner in our village. It happened on December 7th. They're creating, thanks to a $20 million gift from New York Presbyterian Hospital, a home for the New York Presbyterian Iona School of Health Services. Um, the president of Iona said, and I quote, Bronxville campus is to become a vibrant hub of more than just health care, but where world-class seminars, speakers, performing arts, athletic, summer camps, and more will be hosted. So this is such good news that Iona, frankly, wants to embrace the village. Uh, they're doing a lot of infrastructure work. So classes on the campus will not begin until a year from January as they refit everything for um, uh, sort of medical, medical needs. Um, other news, uh, that is such exciting news for this village. I mean, it's just wonderful, wonderful news. Um, and giving a teaser, there'll be wonderful news on Monday by a group that I think everybody in the village will be happy to hear um, for our business district. So stay tuned for the folks who made it happen on Monday. Uh, we had a parade and uh, thanks to the chamber and the DPW for uh, having our great girls uh, cross country team. I know both Helen, Mary was there when our cross country team went home to States and I believe Helen was there for the soccer team. So they decided our candy bags and your presence were good <laughs> luck. So, so ladies, be, be, uh, stay tuned to keep doing it. Um, but the cross country team was thrilled to ride in the back of the pickup truck. And um, thanks to our DPW fellows. Um, some news everyone's been asking about the bridge at the dock pond on the Bronx River pathway. Talk to the head of um, County Parks. And she said, unfortunately, because it was flood, they're waiting for insurance. They have to get a new design for that little bridge because it wasn't flood worthy. So through no fault of anyone, the bridge, the new bridge is not coming anytime soon. Uh, tomorrow starts our leaf blower, gas blower ban. And um, it goes until March 15th. Um, 
If anyone sees a blower that shouldn't be out there, you can call Village Hall, you can call the PD. And we kind of have a new process where we call the gardening companies and um, deal with the folks um, who run the businesses. Um, and it makes more sense. Um, and also, you know, the most important thing in the next 11 days is shop local. Our folks just need us so much. These days are truly their make it or break it days. So, um, and as I wrote this week, honestly, when you understand sales tax and property tax, shopping in our stores is a win-win on every level. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to my fellow trustees um, to talk about, I know, Helen, you were instrumental in this, um, this new food compost. Um, I went to my book club today and I was shocked. They were all talking about food composting. And I was just so proud I read the book that, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I was there, there, it's a if, if I can just uh, yeah. I interrupt, I, I'd like to, to move that we deem the open session of uh, the December meeting of the Village of Bronxville Board of Trustees deemed open retroactive to the start of your remarks. Oh, I thought I reopened it. Oh, oh. But, but usually there's a motion and a vote to approve. Do I? Right. We were at, I think it was... But that's okay. You know yeah, I, I think it was already open because we were we just went straight from the work session. But yes, but that, that's, you know what, that's Bill fine. Wright, yeah. our our lawyer in residence, um, can we retroactive go to a motion to reopen the meeting? <laughs> so moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Bill, you keep us um, happy to do that. Thank you, sir. You have such good procedures. All I have to do is remember them. <laughs> and this well, is. Let's go to I, Helen. I need Jim Stout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Helen. So, yeah. So I just, um, you know, we I we had the I guess the grand opening of the um, food scrap uh, drop off area. And Mary, you I, I didn't make it, but I know you did the the, the ribbon cutting, the green ribbon cutting. Um, to officially open the drop-off site. I at least 10 members of the Green Committee came. Yeah, they well, they have been, you know, the Green Committee has just been like the, the solid um, uh, force behind the, the, the launching of the, of the food scrap um, yes. uh, program with, uh, with Stephen, you know, Shallow, yeah. really doing yeoman's work to, to make that happen. Um, people can pick up, I, I have a prop here. Um, kids are for sale in Village Hall. There, this is the one that you keep on your counter to put the food scraps in. Um, there's a the kit comes with a larger green bin for transportation, but uh, the starter kit comes with uh, plastic bags, compostable bags, and um, there's a handy label on the front of the bin that tells you what kind of food scraps are um, uh, acceptable. And there's information in, in the kit really that, that describes uh, the program and uh, how to make the best use out of it. Um, you know, it, it, it benefits the environment, it benefits the village because it uh, really reduces the weight of um, the garbage that our regular DPW guys pick up. So um, I think it's gonna be a great program and thanks for everyone who's been involved and who uh, are launching it to be a success. Bill Fredericks or Mary? Mary, I have to say my colleagues in the Mayor's Association are laughing that we finally have a newsletter. Um, <laughs> and I say oh. it's all it's all thanks to another Mary. So again, it's, you know, we're well, to, just- To quote Jim Palmer, he said the, the December newsletter was our best. So yeah. thanks to Jim and Mary Ann and obviously with Mary, um, we are doing a, a monthly newsletter and we encourage, as I do every month, encourage our residents to sign up. We have about 2000 people, distinct emails it goes to. We're looking to obviously expand that. So um, please spread the word and uh, it's easy to sign up. It's called One Mile um, Square and it's on our uh, front page of the website. You can click on it and then sign up from there. 
Thank you, Mary. Perfect. Trustee Fredericks. Uh, well, for those who may have tuned in earlier, we had uh, a work uh, extensive working group session with Andrew Langhoff on behalf of the ad hoc committee and uh, Trustee Knapp. And I have uh, met with them now twice. And uh, I think that uh, there's going to be a lot of interesting ideas and, and projects uh, coming out of the work of of that committee to make our streets more safe, more walkable, more bikeable. Um, you know, a lot of ideas I think will come out. We'll have to sort through them, but uh, uh, sort of much as the Green Committee has been a good initiative, this certainly looks like it'll be a promising one as well. Uh, I know that uh, Jim Palmer and Jim Stout Village Council have circulated uh, some proposed additional draft uh, zoning regulations, including. <laughs> Uh, with respect to solar, so that's percolating. And uh, the one thing you didn't mention, Mayor, about Trustee Barron's and Trustee Knapp's uh, send off to our wonderful girls soccer and across county, uh, across country teams, was I think it was pouring rain that morning. But uh, you know, just like the post office, uh, neither uh, wind nor rain nor sleet uh, stayed uh, them in the course or in the team's course of of, of business. So. Uh, Great work uh, on, on behalf of all those folks. I mean, congrats again to the to those girls' teams. Yes, well said. All right, uh, Village Administrator Palmer. Uh, Mayor, before I go off on that, did um, did you want to uh, introduce our county legislator, or do, do you want to do that, or? I, I thought I would just do your report and then have our county legislator just to keep it sort yeah. of organized. Um, but of course, you can make yours quick. <laughs> uh, ten, ten, ten. Duly noted. Uh, yeah. No, I, just, uh, I just wanted to mention, even though we did put it in the newsletter, uh, for anyone listening, please get the word out that yes, in support of shopping local, we are offering or providing free parking at our um, municipal lots from noon on for this um, for this coming Saturday, uh, as well as also on. Uh, also on um, on Christmas Eve as well on the uh, on uh, the 24th on Friday the 24th uh, and just as a reminder as we uh, approach the snow season although I hope we don't get any snow that uh, residents and merchants are once again responsible for maintaining the sidewalks in front of their residents or business and uh, we request that you be respectful, keep it safe. It's not only in the code, but it's respectful for, uh, for patrons. And uh, don't let contractors plow snow out into the roadway. Leaf collection is winding down. The weather's been all holding up. The DPW has worked some weekends uh, and that's also helped. Uh, I'm really pleased that the, um, under our foreman's leadership, uh, Victor Lima, He's made sure that all the neighborhoods have been hit at least once a week. So, uh, and he keeps a really detailed log on that, but um, we're just about, we're just about done. And um, then of course, as the board knows, the DPW building is open and functioning. I just wanted to make sure the general public knew that um, we appreciate everyone's patience and uh, the uh, equipment is now being stored in there and uh, we will uh, have a dedication in the not too distant future, right, Mayor? Absolutely. Is That's that all it? I have. Okay, yes. then I understand you told me our legislator Walters is on the phone or on our, um, and Ruth, I welcome you and uh, on behalf of a very grateful community, I thank you for your service. I was reading something today. Teddy Roosevelt said, it's easy to sit on the sidelines, but the credit goes to those who go into the arena. And you did it and you did it remarkably. And I am so glad you're here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you to the trustees and to Jim Palmer. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Chief Satriali is on, but I thank him as well. I'm Ruth Walter, Westchester County Legislator for District 15, which includes the village of Bronxville and parts of North and East Yonkers. 
Uh, it's never easy to lose an election, but this past election was so disappointing, mostly because I love the work of representing 55,000 residents across two municipalities, both Yonkers and Bronxville. I live in Bronxville, but I have spent the last five years in all parts of this district, learning the different organizations and communities that make Yonkers great. I live in Bronxville, I own a business here, I've raised my two children here with my husband, Kevin. So the love I have for the village has spread out across my district in Yonkers as well. Results from the election show that village voters overwhelmingly again supported me at 62%. Thank you for the support I have maintained across all parties and ages. I am truly grateful. While turnout was dramatically lower across the district, 20% fewer voters in Yonkers voted. In the village, an amazing 1,004 voters came out for me and turnout here was only down about 2%. And as the mayor said, if you're watching this now, please go and vote. <laughs> there is a fire board election today and it's open till nine. So all of this to say what an honor and joy it has been to work in Westchester on behalf of this amazing district. I wanna thank the residents of my district, including those in the village for their thoughtful common communications on local policy. From Joey Barra complaining about the late buses to Peter Thorpe asking about dredging Bronxville Lake, it was their input that was the impulse for me to put projects into the county capital budget in order to improve their quality of life. Projects like the noise camera pilot program to cut down on noisy mufflers, the bottle refill stations in county parks to cut down on plastic pollution, and the senior fitness parks to give our senior citizens a space of their own outdoors. This year, after so much work with their local residents on the Bronxville Safe Streets Committee, I also put $15 million in our county capital budget for a complete streets matching fund. This, will allow, this fund will allow local municipalities like Bronxville to make improvements to make local roads truly multi-use around the county. I'm also so proud of the work the County Health Department has done during COVID, encouraging residents to be safely vaccinated, distributing thousands of free masks and sanitizers, and combating the disinformation and politicization of community health. That is what a dedicated County Health Department we have and it does so well. We now know that community health is the foundation of our economy and the dedicated first responders need our partnership to keep residents healthy. As chair of the Environment and Health Committee and vice chair of Parks and Recreation, I had the opportunity to work with dedicated and skilled public servants across the administration. Now turning to the village, I am so honored and grateful to you for your partnership. The village trustees, Jim Palmer, the mayor have really increased their communication and collaboration with the county. First by passing the model affordable housing ordinance, then by joining the county consortium, then by accessing a free planning department program for complete streets. And then finally by applying for matching funds from the stormwater management fund. This benefits all village residents and knowing that I leave you with the tremendous growth in that partnership is extremely satisfying. I close with an appeal to you as trustees to consider passing term limits. Running for office is never a decision that someone takes lightly. And I urge you to pass an ordinance to limit your own roles to eight or 10 years. Three of Bronxville's trustees were elected after I was and what energy you have brought to the village programs in a short time. The village has a tremendous pool of talent that can be accessed dedicated professionals from many areas of the business and nonprofit world. They would be eager to serve a term that had limited scope. Under the able management of Jim Palmer, the village does its, well, its work exceedingly well. And the opportunity for leadership that term limits would offer others in the village would truly be a boon to our village. Term limits helps keep the village from the belief that any one person must sit in your chairs. County legislators have 12 year term limits. The county executive has eight years. This is an idea I hope you will consider seriously for the best outcome of the village. As for me, I hope to have the opportunity to serve at the county level in some future role. 
I am not done with public service by any means. I will continue my work on boards and with great organizations across my district, from Bronxville Rotary to Aquahunk, the Yonkers Democratic Women's Political Club. I urge you to continue our fruitful and thoughtful communication. I am always here if you need anything. Thank you for all you do. Uh, thank you, Ruth. I just want to take a minute, Mary, if that's okay. Um, I just want to personally thank Ruth for your service. It's been really great working with you since I became a trustee a year and a half ago. And I think your <laughs> knowledge of what goes on at the county and reminding us as a, a group, as a board, uh, of the resources and access of the things that we can um, tap into. Um, obviously, Jim Palmer and Mary have been on it a lot longer than we have, uh, Helen, Bill, and I, but you've been a good resource to us to, to remind us of things like the Westchester Consortium and um, the Safe Streets and obviously the flood mitigation to name a few. And I think you named those earlier in your um, remarks, but thank you and best of luck in your future endeavors and we'll miss you. Thank you. I'm not going far, I'm still here. <laughs> thank you though. I, I just wanna second everything that, that Mary said. Uh, I think you have set an extremely high bar uh, for uh, the, the role of county legislator. Uh, I've, I've found working with you to be uh, both an immense pleasure and a, ex and a great learning experience uh, as well. And I, I hope very much that uh, you mean it when you say that, uh, that you aren't going anywhere. So thanks again. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say Thank also, you, Ruth, your, your dedication to public service and making a positive difference um, you know, locally and at the county and beyond um, have really been so inspiring um, to me and to so many others in this village and beyond to know that they can um, work hard and, and do things and make a difference. That is, that's, it's so important for people to feel that, you know, that, that empowerment. Um, so we are, none of us are letting you go <laughs> anywhere. I know we'll, we'll, you know, so much, so much that you've accomplished and so many of the partnerships that you've put in motion are, are going to be bearing fruit for years and years. So um, thank you. And we'll see thank you. you, trustees. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will go on to the approval of the minutes. I have a new set of minutes, which uh, we thought we were meeting. I went through them with Mary Ann and we made a few very minor changes, but we fixed, for example, uh, Trustee Fredericks had an apostrophe on Fredericks. I don't know if you saw that, but um, so we made, yeah, yeah. We made about four uh, changes. Um, so if anyone has more changes, Mary Ann was so careful, she sent me four sets of new minutes after I found about four um, four changes. So, um, Mayor, I just had two quick ones and they're very minor, but in your report after the first yeah. paragraph of the period, um, yes, yeah, we added that back in. And then on the page uh, five toward the end in the public comments when Robert Ramsey was speaking, he mentioned how Lawrence Hospital dot 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 and just make sure that's how H O W. Yes. Yeah, okay. those Thank were you. ones. Yeah, okay. um, yeah. Thank you. We thought, I think there were four like that periods and on an apostrophe. But I have um, Marianne was so careful that I have new minutes. Um, should you want them? But they were very minor. But there were four fixes in them. So um, if I could have a motion then to approve the minutes of the. November 8th work session, the November 8th regular meeting, and our November 23rd executive session. I so need moved. a motion. Okay, second. and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And again, thank Mary Ann. Yep. Uh, Jim, Jim Palmer, do you want to start with um, the new business? Probably the most important thing is at the top. Right, and uh, I'm sorry, and where are we going to move the police officers then to the top of the line? Or? Oh, 
you're so right. I am so sorry. I'm looking at my, um, and I would love the trustees to um, Mary or Helen or Bill, who were an integral part of this, I would like one of you to read the motion and introduce the police officers. Um, okay, I could, uh, maybe I won't read the motion as, um, but I could um, just add some comments in the beginning. Um, okay. The mayor and um, uh, the three trustees, Barons, Fredericks and Knapp had a chance to interview the three, three police officer finalists. Um, they are all on the Zoom tonight and we welcome you. Um, first, we just want I just, we all thought that the chief and the police department did an outstanding job screening, interviewing and doing all the back, background checks on the three, on these candidates. Um, secondly, all these candidates are very qualified. They're trained. They've been on the police force already. They have great dispositions, great personalities, and they are of very, very fine character. They, thirdly, they all have local connections and know our surrounding area very well. And I, I, I think we all were in agreement that they would make fine um, police officers in our village. And we really look forward to, um, and we all support them in the hiring of, of all three of them. And um, we are very happy that um, this worked out as it did. Um, and I think they're gonna be a great additions to the force. I don't know, remain calm. All right. Um Trustee Knapp or Trustee Fredericks, would you like to add comments or and or one of you authorize the resolution? I, I'll read the resolution if Bill wants to make a comment. Uh, Perfect. I, I just want to second everything that uh, Trustee Barron's had, had to say and uh, again to welcome the officers to, to the force and uh, just make the, the general comment that uh, I think we as a community take enormous pride in the quality of our police force, and uh, we are very proud to uh, have three new members who who we think are going to contribute to that uh, record of of experience and and strong standards and uh, welcome. Uh, where we feel lucky to have. You. I think that's terrific. And before Helen reads it, I just have to say, as the chief would say, you're, you're welcome to a family and a wonderful village family. And um, we feel so fortunate that you chose us as well. So welcome, gentlemen. And Helen, would you do the formal um, resolution? Would I read the entire thing as... Um, including you can, the you numbers. Just read the, read the uh, therefore, the resolve is fine. Yeah. Yes, the therefore. Okay. So now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby authorizes hiring Justin Sokol, Ahmed Danso Fariad, and Joseph Amoruso, effective December 15th, 2021, as second year officers um, at a base salary of 63,466 each and subject to a 52 week probationary period each. Perfect. Do I have a motion to accept that? So moved. Uh, Trustee Barron's moved. Second. Oh, and, and Trustee Frederick second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Welcome, gentlemen. We are a lucky community to have you and we hope you will come back if, if um, life permits to our January meeting so the villagers can meet you in person, but we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Congrat yep. Congratulations. And I think they hit the ground running tomorrow with training already. So <laughs> That's what I, I do know that. So I would uh, be the chief getting them right at it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Congratulations all. Yes, congratulations. Mr. Palmer. Okay, so uh, going back to the agenda. So the, uh, the next item is the adoption of the County Hazard Mitigation Plan. So as some additional background, uh, every five years, the county updates its hazard mitigation plan. All the local municipalities within the county have the opportunity to participate in that plan. Uh, the village has for as long as I can remember. 
So we are participating in the plan and in the most recent newsletter and also on the village website, we have a link where residents can view the county hazard mitigation plan including the specific section that also entails Bronxville. But on the county website, where there is a public comment period through this Friday, uh, residents can see the, uh, the entire plan. Uh, as, a, uh, <clears throat> as additional background, this is a living, breathing document. Uh, as I said, this is the uh, 2022 update. And uh, we've made a series of recommendations to the county for additional uh, additional changes. And uh, while the the formal plan needs to be uh, adopted by all the municipalities within the county uh, by mid January, there will always be an ongoing time uh, for additional comments. Stephen Shallow. Uh, my assistant spent a lot of time uh, participating in all the calls with the county's contractor on this project, Tetra Tech. Stephen, I don't know if you want to um, quickly um, highlight some of the items that are uh, identified in the resolution that the board is going to be uh, considering tonight, perhaps some of the pieces of what the hazard mitigation plan entails. Sure, I think some of the uh, larger items on the, the plan that we've updated uh, this particular year uh, include the, the chronic flooding issues that we've been experiencing along the Bronx River Parkway. Uh, we've uh, addressed that um, uh, Parkway Road, uh, Paxton Avenue, uh, Lone Milburn. Uh, we detailed that area and included that in the plan and uh, highlighted the fact that we will be working with the county to uh, address that further. Uh, we've made updates to the Midland Avenue um, flood remediation efforts that we've uh, installed with the storm water uh, pumps that we have there. And then we will be making uh, additional uh, edits. Uh, I have a whole list of notes that I'm, I'm looking at at the moment uh, to updates members of the public on the efforts uh, that the village is going to pursue to make sure that we're prepared uh, for future uh, hazard events. It, it's also just worth noting for the public's edification that uh, this plan was being worked on over the course of the past year. So unfortunately, it does not include the, um, the flood numbers uh, that is the uh, amount of rain that fell from Hurricane Ida in September. And this is something that we've also requested to the county and whether or not if it gets, if it doesn't get part of this plan, it will be certainly in future updates because what we did see, as you all know, with Hurricane Ida is that uh, traditional 100 year, eight inch rainfall being more than 77% of that falling within 120 minutes. And as a result, the information that we submitted to the county as it relates to our flooding hazard is uh, locations that uh, were absolutely um, dramatically impacted by Ida, uh, not the least of which includes pockets of Alder Lane, areas along Duesenberry, areas along the 22 corridor that suffered uh, massive amounts of runoff off of uh, 22 in the vicinity of Sherman and Sussex. Those were uh, areas that were not highlighted on the previous plan as it relates to uh, flood mitigation. So just for your edification, the public edification, we have requested the county update those maps and update those areas. Uh, and as part of our bigger picture, something that we need to, um, uh, to address long term. So um, with that being said, um, did the board want to consider this resolution of participating and supporting the county's plan and the village's role in continuing the plan and continuing to uh, update our plan? I will move it and I need a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Stephen, for all your work on this, along with Jim. Yeah. Yes. Yeah.
Thank you, Stephen. Lots of uh, lots of individual details since they do this every five years when they want to know if a tree, if a community has a, a tree preservation plan, and and the village does. We we spend a enormous amount, more than most communities, on something such as tree preservation. We may not have a tree ordinance, but we have a tree preservation plan, uh, and and that's uh, much of what that that plan entails is updating all the ordinances relevant ordinances uh, and laws that communities have adopted over time or plans, not necessarily just ordinances. Uh, okay, uh, some housekeeping oh, items. Can I just ask them, uh, so have, we are deciding to kind of hold off on our, our questions and comments about this until January is, you know, uh, is that what we agreed in the work session? Yes, so I think the mayor is going to, uh, we'll throw out some dates for the work session. We'll make sure we include the piece on the hazard mitigation plan and any items of concern or uh, that you want Stephen and I to address further. Yes. Thank you. Uh, but this ensures that we're uh, participating in the plan and that we'll be eligible for uh, future funding uh, related to participating in the county's plan. Okay, so the next item is just uh, confirming the polling places, even though the county board of elections is once again going to be overseeing the uh, March village elections, it is our responsibility to provide them with the locations. And these locations will continue with um, the village hall serving the two districts, 16 and 17. The Vodder House will continue with the other three districts, 18, 19, and 21. I did get the approval of the board of fire commissioners on that. Uh, and then also uh, Christ Church, which has been the home now for a couple of years of both districts, number 20 and 22. So you're really just uh, confirming those polling locations. And then of course the county will uh, bring the equipment in uh, and uh, I will assist them as necessary. Uh, and then what's also just noted here then is that village elections will be held on Tuesday, March 15th from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And uh, the last day for uh, a voter may register with the Board of Elections is March 4th. Jim, can I just ask a question, which is uh, where physically in Village Hall do you anticipate the setup being? Because having voted for you know, fire commissioner <laughs> earlier today, um, it, it seemed rather cramped to be doing it in, in the lobby. And is there a way to clear out some space, for example, in the in the trustees room to, to do it there? I mean, maybe that's the plan. I, I, I'm just used to voting at Concordia and I know we have to make different arrangements now, but could you comment on that? Yes, absolutely. So for village elections, yes, because it's two polling sites, we absolutely will, uh, the DPW breaks out the trustees room. So that will continue. Uh, it just so happens because they have a smaller number of machines, the um, the fire district has, has always just used the lobby. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that that isn't tight. But yes, for our village election, it will be the full trustees room, the trustees board room. Yep. Thanks. All right, in thanking every group that allows us to uh, use their facilities for voting. Do I have a motion to approve our 2022 village uh, polling plan? Uh, motion so, to approve. And second. a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Resolution C, Mr. Palmer. Yes, uh, this is another housekeeping matter. The village utilizes uh, the system known as track software, which allows us uh, to utilize the resources of both Westchester County and also New York State. Uh, this is the um, electronic ticketing accident uh, report system and uh, associated form. So this is, uh, this is an example of a great shared service that we have with both the county and the state. And I believe this is once again um, a five-year uh, five Okay, and this is our usual that we do on a periodic basis, correct? 
Absolutely. In short, it's the hardware yeah. and the software that we get to that we get to use as minimal expense that allows us to communicate with both the state and the county in real time for processing tickets and uh, information with the state. Perfect. Do I have a motion to accept? Second. Okay. I, I'll move it. Bill, uh, Trustee Frederick seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, the uh, next item is uh, we talked about in our uh, work session authorizing uh, use of unassigned fund balance of $20,343 to uh, upgrade our uh, software and hardware associated with our uh cameras that cover village hall the dpw the new dpw and also uh also the library it's mostly software upgrades and um it, it's just time to update that and put the latest uh uh the latest security systems uh in place and uh it is expensive but we have uh an extensive number of cameras obviously the library has some very expensive artwork uh, we were very strategic in where we placed the new cameras over at the new DPW, I can tell you, but we do have cameras covering that whole area as well as the parking lots, as well as, uh, as well as inside. So I should emphasize that the cameras on all of our facilities, uh, municipal facilities, not only inside, but outside. Any trustee comment before I move that? Jim, how often do we have to upgrade these um, software? Do you find you're doing this every few years, every five years, or just depending on how fast the, the technology is moving? And you know what? It really is dependent on how fast technology is. I can tell you, we had not um, spent anywhere close to this within the past uh, within the past six years, but there's been a lot of there's been a lot of changes. Don't they don't they sell packages that um, you know kind of have automatic upgrades to it or you have to pay for the technology every time it changes um the cameras that we've had in place we've had we've had for quite uh we've had we had for quite some time we do have an ongoing maintenance agreement and service agreement with the company but we didn't have um they wouldn't commit to the software upgrade hmm. Okay. But 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 fair question. Something that we can we can look at going forward. Okay. I will say they are a state vendor. They are already on state contract, so we're relying on the state to do uh, competitive bidding on also what is somewhat specialized. Yeah. Thank Although uh, both the chief and I scrutinize their work um, uh, pretty carefully, but um, again, they are on state contract, but they also know the village hall very well. There's there's a lot of additional work that they do, but. <clears throat> Do many of them have live feeds or are they um, just recorded? No, there's live feeds. I know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that, that, those cameras can be uh, those cameras can be viewed by the police department at all times. Super. <clears throat> all right, then. Do I have uh, a motion authorizing our capital project for security cameras? Someone like to move it. So moved. All right. And a second. A second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Uh, the next item is, uh, is just authorizing me to execute the uh, the settlement with Pam Transport. Uh, if you're all aware of this agreement, we we talked about this previously. Uh, after. Uh, the Granderton Pond Fields intersection was damaged in February of two, uh, 2019, and the company responsible for transport refused uh, to reimburse the villages for the cost to restore that intersection. We took them to court, uh, and after extensive uh, mediation, we've uh, come to a settlement of $150,000, and you have a copy of the of, a copy of the release. And I have to say, uh, village administrator, you did a terrific job on this because this was a um, 
a tough road uh, when they wanted to pay zero. And it also, <clears throat> for my fellow trustees, it, it gave us the opportunity or galvanized us, we're gonna really fix that intersection. So timing wise, it will help everyone who comes down Gramatin, down Pondfield. I think it will even help the, I know it will help the traffic at the school with the timing and the uh, better lights. So, um, Jim uh, Collins. After, after, yeah, and, and thank you, Mary. And to, and to that point, I know some people go by and say, gee, what's going on with this intersection? Unfortunately, it's right. hard to believe that it will be coming up on three years, but this litigation takes time. There were a lot of depositions, and uh, I, I got to reserve my other comments. But at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> estimates to restore that intersection were almost $300,000. So would I have liked to see $300,000? But at the end of the day, uh, we have a reasonable settlement, and we will be able to put um, today's signals there with the appropriate poles, lighting, and sidewalks. So um, thank you for supporting the effort. Um, Jim, how, with respect to upgrading it or to, um, to doing the capital improvements eventually to, mm -hmm. to the intersection, how long do you think that will entail now that you've received um, the settlement or you're going to receive the settlement shortly? Um, so uh, let's see, can the, board for, can the board just first approve the settlement? <laughs> oh yes, sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, then do I have a motion to approve our settlement? So moved. I'll move. And a second. I'll, I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The okay. settlement oh, oh. is approved, but Jim, uh, kindly answer questions. Yes. So, um, so now the plan would be to um, finalize design and go out to bid over the course of the winter and possibly have you even awarded before spring. Um, so that's the plan is finish the design work that we've done to date over the course of the winter and um, put the project out to bid, scope all the work and have the board award it so that we could hit the, round, the ground running as soon as the weather improves. Jim, is what there... Is there any possibility of merging this work with plans for the uh, Midland Pondfield intersection to sort of get a bulk discount or are those projects really on separate tracks? Um, no, no, I, I just, no, I wanna just be a little cautious as to, uh, still as to what we, uh, to, to what we say, um, but, uh, that's absolutely something that we are evaluating. Yes, bidding the two projects out together. Absolutely. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. I think we have a public hearing next to schedule. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the next item is just to uh, propose scheduling the public hearing for amendments to Chapter 61 of the Village Code, which essentially is for the uh, creation of the position of assistant village administrator. Uh, so this is local law number one, proposing the, the hearing for our January meeting. And the January meeting is, uh, where was the calendar? Uh, January 10th. And that's for, again, amendments to chapter 61 of the village code, which is essentially create uh, the creation of the position of assistant village administrator and for the village administrator uh, and the duties of the village administrator. For the public edification, that chapter 61 references the role of the village administrator uh, and the role of the administrator uh, reporting to the village board of trustees. What it does not have is any reference to assistant village administrator. So that's what we are going to be uh, codifying. And, and Mr. Palmer, will this be, this will be on our website, should someone want to look at it um, before the uh, January hearing, correct? Absolutely, yes. Okay. All right, then I just need a motion to schedule the public hearing. Could someone move it? So moved. And a second. Second. 
second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So we will have that a public hearing at our January meeting. And I think Great. our, yeah. Yep, no, go ahead, Mayor, I'm sorry. That's the last item of the calendar. Yep. Yes, I'm one, sorry. Uh, uh, no, so uh, there was one more item after that, but the, um, the, the radio calendar. No, Jim, do the radios. Trustee Barron's is right. We'll end mm -hmm. with the calendar. Got it. So, uh, the, so the other item that I added was the um, authorization of unassigned fund balance for the purchase of two police radios for our new hires. The total amount of, that would come from unassigned fund balance is ten thousand one hundred and sixty-five dollars. Um, and again, we. We budget for many items to outfit our new police officers, uh, but we went to a new radio system uh, just uh, over a year ago, uh, being able to piggyback on the um, a Metro North system, uh, and we purchased a fixed number of radios for that. So we do need two additional uh, radios because the board also authorized additional police officers, right? Uh, to complement, increase our complement of police officers. So if you could uh, authorize that purchase. I think this is an easy one to uh, well equip our new officers. So would someone like to make a motion? Mm -hmm. and a I'll second. second Helen's motion. Yeah, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <laughs> And then our last motion is just our uh, calendar for the new year with, I think, one change, Mr. Palmer. Yes. So, right. Following, uh, since the, the mayor and I will need to be attendance at the NICOM legislative winter meeting, which is going to be on the 14th, on Monday the 14th, it's very difficult to get back in time. So uh, we will change that to Monday, the February 7th. So instead of meeting the normal second Monday of the month in February will meet on the first Monday, which will be February 7th. Um, otherwise, all the other meetings are on the, first, on the second Monday of the month, with the exception of Columbus Day, where we always meet the Tuesday after. And that's it. All right. Do I have a motion to accept the new trustee calendar with that one change? So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And trustees, just an opportunity if we missed anything tonight, um, if you'd like to add at this juncture. I, I was just rereading the minutes of our last meeting and the installation of the electric charging stations. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, it's just a, a general comment that we don't need to spend any time on now, but uh, you know, it just seems that the pace of electric vehicles just seems to be taken off. And, you know, I was talking to my wife Ivy this morning, you know, whether the car makers will even be making any you know, gas powered or solely gas powered cars after another you know, 10 years or so. And I just sort of wondered whether we're sort of uh, kind of keeping abreast of, of where technology may be. I mean, in, in we're, we're certainly going to need more than two charging stations at, at, at some point. But, um, but anyway, it, it just struck my eye. It, it's sort of neither here nor there, but it sort of struck my eye. Uh, right. The only thing I would mention is remember, now we are going to be, so we've been very strategic about this, though, because we, some communities did take advantage of free charging stations a decade ago, and they sat empty. So I think we're being real strategic because Stephen follows us on his phone and the app very carefully. This is going to increase our capacity to 10 charging stations, but we want to, uh, we've been listening to our patrons, our customers, our residents, and the garden lot is, is the next logical place. But you're right, the way they're going, we're hoping that other funding is going to come our way, right, Stephen? Con Ed's now getting in on the game, and we thought it, was, it took them forever to get in. Uh, behind Nicerta, but um, but you're right. I think going forward, 
we're monitoring that demand and there'll be definitely be other locations where we'll need more, right? Just, just a, 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 a slight correction. It's not 10, 10 charging stations. It would be capacity for 10 uh, electric vehicles at any given time. Right. 10 ports, right? Yes. 10 ports. Yeah, okay. many are dual port. Yep, yep. Any right. other, I was going to open it to anyone that might be on our Zoom, on the phone, um, any public comment out there on any subject. All right, I think seeing none, I thank everybody and I just wish everybody in the community, I know people had a happy Hanukkah. Jim and I were at the lighting of the menorah with the chief and it was quite, quite beautiful. And I wish everyone else a Merry Christmas and a joyous holiday season. So with that, I just need a motion to end our December meeting. So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose, see everyone in the new year. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Yeah. Yeah. The village. Take care. Yeah. Happy holidays. All right, Take thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.